It's a Friday afternoon. I'm John Furlong. Well, he's interviewed everyone from uh, Fidel Castro to uh, Storm and Norman, I think. Covered the big land to the crossroads of the world. And David Zeltzer has been a bit like Hank Snow. He's been everywhere. And David Zeltzer is at another crossroads today, entering the next phase as he prepares to put down his microphone and camera and leave the CBC. And David joins me now from our studio in Gander. Hi, David. Hi, John. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm excellent. You must be feeling like a schoolboy about to get out of school for the summer, are you? I don't know. I, I, I'm having trouble describing it. It's uh, it's better today. Uh, the run-up the last two or three days I've found a little more difficult, but today I, I'm feeling good. David, for uh, you know people who followed you uh, night after night after night on Here and Now and on CBC Radio, it's been a great career. But where did it all begin? 1973. The National Radio Newsroom in Toronto... I, uh, July 1973, I walked in. I was 16 years old, and uh, the Watergate hearings were on. Wow. And I, I was hooked. I was hooked. Uh, a, a room full of old men banging on typewriters and smoking. It was, it was awesome. So you had no uh, visions of being a reporter up until you entered that, that environment? No, I did. Oh. When I was 12 years old, I started my first newspaper. I started it at my junior high school. I was 12. And when I was 16, I started, oh, no, I, I wanted to do this from the beginning. David, uh, you know, you've, you've uh, had a lot of, uh, of your time in Newfoundland and Labrador. Well, you've had a lot of time in Labrador as well. I mean, uh, you know, stories about the, uh, the base and its closing and, and uh, the people who've passed through. Uh, just talk about a little bit about, and you met, of course, you met your future wife while you worked in Labrador. Just talk a little bit about your time in Labrador. You know, what I remember most about Labrador is is the difficulty of of touring around, uh, you know, with with Tony Dawson and uh, you know uh, getting around the big land, uh, getting stuck, uh, getting frozen, uh, frozen equipment, uh, you know, standing on the uh, at the airport in in what was Davis Inlet then, uh, you know, uh, minus seventy with the wind chill, wow, and freezing my nose. And uh, getting stuck in Davis Inlet. Why are so many stories about Davis Inlet? For nine days, stuck in Davis Inlet when the weather came down with uh, every reporter from Eastern Canada had gone in there to uh, cover the, uh, uh, the what was supposed to be the uh, provincial court being uh, forced back in there by the, by the province. And uh, that never happened, but uh, uh, we sh sure had some good hockey games. Mm -hmm. uh, and David, tell me about, uh, then you moved on to uh, Gander. Well, you met your, your uh, wife there, Leanne Power, another colleague of, of mine and ours at the CBC. How did that come about? Happy Valley Goose Bay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was uh, I was working there, and she was hired to uh, work there as a writer broadcaster, and that's where we met. And uh, we actually got married the week we moved to Gander. Wow. And what's that like working with your wife now? Uh, do you disagree on the job? Is it like disagreeing at home, or is there a different tone to it? Uh, we don't uh, we don't disagree at work uh, the same way we disagree at home. At, at work, it's uh, more. Uh, uh, more of a professional relationship. We, uh, we've, uh, I hope uh, she would agree with this, uh, mm -hmm. have complimented each other. I, I've stolen many stories from her over the years. <laughs> and uh, uh, we've worked together, uh, you know, uh, 19 years we've collaborated on stories. I mean, uh -huh. we, we won an Atlantic Journalism Award uh, together for the uh, Ryan's Commander coverage. That was, uh, that was uh, an absolute highlight to win that with her. Yeah, and David, it must be difficult to try to uh, to take out highlights from such a, a long and, and storied career, but I know 9-11 was a big factor uh, at the time in Labrador at the base, uh, uh, Ryan's commander. What, what are some of the things that stand out in your mind when you reflect on your career? You know, there's a couple of stories that, that I'm really, really proud of. I'm proud of everything I did. But there's a couple of stories to stand out. And uh, this morning we played here the uh, the, the Blue Rodeo story, mm -hmm. the uh, radio pack I did for uh, uh, for uh, Central uh, 10 years ago, and uh, where I managed to talk my way uh, up onto the uh, mm -hmm. drum riser and play with the band for uh, for five minutes. You know what I mean, that, uh, just being able to uh, weasel my way in there, considering I can't play the drums, was uh, quite a coup as far as I'm concerned. And the other one in my mind, and it's weird when you look at that one and look at this one because they're so different, and that should give you a sense as to how odd my career has been, is the, the Fifth Estate documentary I helped produce uh, uh, about Andy Rose. Andy Rose was a fellow uh, from Grand Falls, Windsor, who was convicted twice of, uh, of murder. Uh, two uh, German tourists had been killed in northern uh, B.C., and uh, during his third trial, uh, the Crown dropped the charges, and nobody's ever been convicted of that murder. And you worked on that documentary with the Fifth Estate. 
I sold it to them. Yeah, I, wow. I went to them and yeah. I, I convinced Lyndon McIntyre that he needed to do this story yeah. and he needed, needed to let me work on it with him. And I mean, uh, another one, I mean, almost as good as talking Blue Rodeo into letting me mm -hmm. play drums. Mm -hmm. Tell me, David, about 9-11. Uh, that obviously uh, looms large in your in your career. You know, I was in on the end of that coverage, but uh, we were on vacation when that happened. And uh, we were, we were, it was my daughter's uh, first birthday, and we were blowing out the candles. Uh, we were in Placentia, and uh, uh, somebody uh, phoned and said, turn the TV on. And we walked over and turned the TV on, and, and oh my God, all, all hell had broken loose in Gander. And uh, they had sent reporters over from Grand Falls to uh, help with the coverage because Leanne and I were both in Placentia. So when we got back, uh, you know, we, we picked it up from there and, uh, and continued on. And uh, I, I remember for, for weeks uh, doing, doing follow stories and all the stuff that fell out from that. And then, of course, uh, every year we'd, uh, we'd continue to do more stories and dredge up more about it and all these things that, you know, in those four or five days, uh, you know, you didn't realize were really happening, you know, that you found out about after the fact, all the all the great stories that came out from that. David, uh, I wanted to ask you about some of the people that you met who have, who have passed through Gander, but uh, apart from some of the, the, the more interesting, more famous people you've met, some of the more interesting are the people who are not necessarily famous, the people you meet in all of the the, the, uh, the small communities, the towns around uh, around central Newfoundland. You know, one of the ones I was thinking about the other day, and I, I keep thinking about all, all of these things now, is uh, when, I, when I did the story about the woman from Musgrave Harbor who died uh, of a heart attack at the hospital here in Gander. Her name was June Abbott. And uh, I spent a lot of time with her family. You know, there was a feeling uh, that, uh, that, that she had not gotten the care that, uh, that she deserved. And I spent a lot of time with her family and, uh, and, and really uh, felt... Uh, you know, felt badly for them because they really couldn't get the answers that they wanted. Those are the kinds of stories that you know I'm thinking about today. People that you would you would you'll, you would never meet unless it was under those circumstances. Mm. And David, what about some of the more uh, famous people that you met uh, passing through Gander or uh, or other places? You know, the the the, the one that I really enjoyed was uh, was Mike Tyson. Uh, mm. I I did a story for the web about it. I was on vacation in New York. And uh, somebody had offered uh, to uh, take me to uh, Mike Tyson's one-man show and uh, had said, I'll get you backstage and, you know, uh, you, can, uh, you can try and interview him, right? And, uh, you know, I, they didn't realize that, you know, these VIP tickets that you get, you know, this is just this cattle call, you know, where you get walked through and you get to shake his hand and, mm -hmm. and you get pushed right out the door. And uh, I, I'm really proud of that story because this five seconds that I got with Mike Tyson, I turned into this you know, uh, I guess it was probably a, an 800-word story uh, uh, for our web that, uh, you know, I'm quite proud of, you know. Uh, and, yeah, I've run into a lot of uh, people like that over the years. Uh, you know, I, I don't ever remember uh, doing a good job on that type of thing. Like uh, Fidel Castro, like, I mean, if you if you listen to the raw tape, we were taken up to the airport and we were told, well, you can't talk to him, but, you know, uh, you can get a shot of him as he walks through the airport shaking hands with people. And uh, sure enough, he never saw a camera he didn't love. He walked right up to us, and I'm sitting there. I haven't prepared any questions, so I'm my mouth comes open and nothing comes out. And mm -hmm. you can hear Eddie Kennedy, who's uh, you know uh, with me operating the camera. You can hear him quietly whisper to me, "Ask him a question." <laughs> Not a fabulous interview. Not my greatest yeah. moment. Uh, David, uh, the thing that always struck me uh, about you is that you obviously enjoyed your work. You absolutely loved it, and, and that was, I think, reflected in not just your work but your approach to it. Is that that a fair observation? Yeah. I mean, uh, you don't you don't fall into something and decide you want to do it when you're 12 and not love it. And you know, uh, I, I've had people ask me, you know, uh, uh, about what they should do with their lives, and I say, do something that you like. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to do it for a long time. Any thoughts on what you'll do with the next uh, phase of your life? You know, I've got a couple of ideas, uh, but really, you know, I'm, my plan is to dial it back. Uh, I mean, I, I'm an older dad, and I have the advantage of uh, being home with my, uh, my young family. I mean, I've got, uh, I've got three children under 14. Uh, I mean, uh, this is an opportunity that most retirees don't get. You know, most people who retire, their kids are grown and they're gone. But, you know, I have the advantage of being home with mine, so I'm looking forward to that. Oh. 
All right, uh, David Willison, certainly uh, all the best. You know how highly I think of you. I've told you many times, but uh, it's nice talking to you, and I appreciate you making time for us this afternoon. And John, I, I have to say the same for you. You know, you know how I feel I about you and your and your uh, and your years here at the CBC. And uh, yes, you're you're a good fellow, John. Thanks, Davis. That's uh, David Zeltzer. He's last day at the CBC today. You're listening to Radio Noon for this Friday afternoon. I'm John Furlong. Now let's see what's making news locally with uh, Maggie Gillis. Maggie. Inside.